selection. <coughs> they are interview method, observation machine method, and questionnaire method. Uh, so the interview is the most commonly used method. They are usually conducted by a manager or supervisor. <coughs> An interview can be done in one-to-one -one setting where only the interview, interview and interviewee is present. Uh, format of the interview is conversational with the interviewer t driving the agenda in the beginning and the interviewee asking questions towards the end. <coughs> An interview could also be held in a group of candidates, um, panel of people from a variety of backgrounds uh, the company are usually present, such as someone from HR, company executives, or employees you are most likely to work with. Um, so interview uh, pros, there's direct feedback from the respondent. It yields rich data, details, and new insights. <coughs> Personal interaction with interviewee, chance to build rapport. Uh, flexibility with location and times, adapting interview to individual. Um, so interview uh, negatives, it's time consuming. Scheduling the interview, conducting the interview, inputting notes for analysis takes time. Uh, it's costly, expensive in the amount of time required to train, schedule, input <coughs> data, and analyze for the pool of candidates. And also, uh, the interviewer error or bias. Okay, so the second one is observation. Observation is another common, commonly used method. Observation is defined as the action or process of closely observing or monitoring someone something or someone. Uh, so there's two types. There's direct observation, which enables the trained job analyst to obtain first-hand knowledge, and indirect, which is just uh, observations via video or evaluations. <coughs> um, observation positives. Um, there's fir first-hand knowledge. You gain knowledge of task, pace, condition, tools, equipment, equ equipment, and relationships with other employees. Simple to use, verifies data from other sources. Um, observation negatives, it's time consuming and costly. Uh, there may be bias toward work, there might be biased worker performance, small sample size, requires skilled observer ability and reliability may be problematic. <coughs> and questionnaire uh, is the final and commonly used data collection method. Questionnaire is defined as a set of printed or written questions of a choice of answers devised for the purposes of obtaining statistically useful or personal information from individuals. Um, so there are structured and unstructured questionnaires. Uh, structured questionnaires such as PAQ or position analysis questionnaire. Uh, PAQs evaluate job skill level and basic characteristic, characteristics of applicants. Um, unstructured questionnaires are more qualitative that they do not require predefined categories. Um, Questionnaire positives uh, does not require trained interviewer, but relatively less expensive and efficient, can reach a larger pool of candidates. Uh, data, data is sometimes standardized and comparable. Respondent can choose to be anonymous. Uh, questionnaire negatives, it may be difficult to construct, may have low response rate, responses may be incomplete, uh, responses may be difficult to interpret, like open-ended questions. So for new and you, um, I work at Tari in Marlton. Uh, when I was first hired, they use one-to-one -one interview, and they use uh, a lot of structured applications. Even now, I, they, I still have to take applications that are, that are structured. Uh, as I said, Target uses a one-to-one -one interview with two different supervisors. When I was interviewed, I was asked several uh, thought-provoking questions like, what was something you did wrong in your last job, and what did you do to improve or change it? Uh, interview questions mainly focused on work, e work ethic, skills, and personality. <coughs> uh, when I was first hired, and even during my employment, I've taken Target questionnaires that are structured and focused uh, around personality. A lot of the questions pick a situation in the workplace and ask you how you would respond to the situation. And next I'll introduce Ryan who will do job analysis and the selection process. Okay, thank you very much, John.
Okay, so as John said, my name is Ryan Clore, and I'm going to be talking about job analysis as far as recruiting and selection goes. Okay, so some of the things that I'm going to be talking about uh, during my portion of the presentation, I'm going to touch a little bit more on what Andrew said with regards to job description and specification, as well as how job analysis affects things like selection tests and interview questions um, as far as actually selecting the candidate that we want for this position. Uh, so the purpose of job analysis is to establish and document the job relatedness of employment procedures such as training, selection, compensation, and performance appraisal. Obviously these are all very important aspects in human resources. You have to train our employees, we have to select our employees properly, we have to compensate them for what they do, everything like that, all very important. Uh, selection itself is the process of choosing from a group of applicants the best individual or individuals for a particular position within that organization. How the people in human resources, the managers making the hiring decisions, feel about the candidates who are applying for the job, whether they believe they'll be a good fit. Job analysis is the first step in the selection process. Um, as Andrew touched upon before, an important component of job analysis is that we're not analyzing the person or the candidate who's applying for the job, we're analyzing the job itself. Rihanna says hi. Okay, uh, so job analysis, uh, the data that is collected, we use it to establish and document competencies that are required for a job. They identify job relatedness of tasks and com competencies that are needed to successfully perform the job, to perform the job the way that uh, the candidate should be able to do it. Um, job analysis can be used in selection procedures for several reasons. They can be made uh, for advertisements, for vacant positions, determining salary levels, um, education and experience requirements, interview questions, selection tests, appraisals, and orientation materials for new employees to the organization. Analyzing a job analysis, um, when you're doing a job analysis, it really requires an in-depth understanding of the position that you're analyzing. You have to examine the tasks in the job, understand what the competencies actually are, and determine the connection between the tasks and competencies when you're um, performing your analysis. Uh, when you're interpreting uh, the results of a job analysis, you have to examine all of the tasks, determine what the essential duties of the position are uh, as compared to some of the less important functions, and understanding the competencies of a job analysis helps to establish requirements such as the level of education you need to have or the years of experience that you need to have for this position. When you're determining a salary um, based on a job analysis, you definitely should not have a definitive salary that's already laid out, especially for a higher level job where salaries would be more negotiable. Uh, you have to consider something called con compensable factors, which would con consider things like education, experience, and job complexity, which uh, has to do with standardized versus non-standardized functions within your job. Uh, once the essential job duties and the necessary education and experience levels are all laid out, that's when you can start to form your job description. You know what the position entails, you know what the ideal candidate should have when applying for this position, so here's when you can start to formulate your description. The description should include a list of the actual job duties, tasks, and responsibilities that um, the person is going to have, uh, who they're going to report to and who's going to report to them, as well as the working conditions, what kind of environment they're going to be in, are they going to be in an office, are they going to be outside, anything like that, it all has to be included. Job specifications consist more of the human requirements for the job, uh, so for example this is where the KSAs came in, and as well as the personal characteristics. Um, so things like your qualities, attributes, traits, whether you're, you need to be someone who's more outgoing or someone who's more technical, things like that, that's where the specifications come into play. Uh, job analysis and interviews is also very important because you're going to have to interview for whatever position it is that you're going for, and job analysis can be used to, to determine interview questions um, that is formulated around the data that was collected. There are eight different types of interview questions that um, can be asked. So we have credential questions, which verifies the knowledge um, of the credentials in your background, as well as the experience in your background. Opinion questions, which are about how you would respond to a certain scenario. And behavioral questions, where they objectively measure your past behaviors as an indicator of future results. <coughs> uh, four more types of questions are competency questions, uh, which determine how your past behaviors will align with your future results. 
brain teaser questions, which evaluate your ability to solve complex problems on the spot, case questions, which go through the problem solving skills of how you would work through a situation, and a dumb question, which tests the ability to think on your feet, like if you had to drop a mixtape tonight, what would you call it? Something like that. Um, so a job analysis and selection tests. Um, job analysis can determine what selection tests are appropriate to conduct on a job candidate. We have four different types of selection tests that I'm going to talk about. They are aptitude test, personality test, ability test, and integrity test. Aptitude test. They measure the work-related cognitive ability, so basically whether you're, almost like whether you're smart enough to do the job. Um, personality tests are determine your behavioral style and how that's going to affect your performance in the job. Ability test. Uh, it tests the individual skills that are necessary to perform the job instead of the job as a whole. And integrity tests help associate the risk with having you as a candidate there. Uh, making the final decision. After you've conducted the job analysis, the description, the specification, the interviews, and the selection test, um, you can choose a candidate for this position. And selecting the right employee for this position is ultimately the goal of the selection process. Um, my new and you is that currently I am the marketing and communications intern at Sharplink Staffing, which is a small little staffing company in Pittman. I am responsible there for creating and posting job descriptions to Indeed, Facebook, and our company's website. Um, and having a solid understanding of these positions through the job analysis, it helps me to create better job descriptions and attract candidates that are more suited for the jobs that our company hires for. Uh, so this has been our presentation on job analysis. Thank you all for being so attentive. And that's what we got for you. Farewell. No, not you guys. But, uh, yes, very well done. Very, very well done. Okay, instead of leaving, come back.